Now to further discuss this, we have with us Professor Song Seryeon from Kyung University. Professor, it's good to have you on the show again. Good to be here. So what struck me about what some of Foreign Minister Kang kyung comments over the last uh, couple of days is they were quite bold statements regarding dealing with North Korea. Mm -hmm. She said that a non-conventional approach is needed and she right. more specifically said um, that uh, demanding a list of no uh, North's nuclear weapons uh, a list of nuclear weapons could risk talks breaking down with the US and that things like the proposed shutdown of nuclear facilities uh, should be accepted by the US. Mm -hmm. What struck me is this is very publicly and openly telling the US you know this is how we believe that you guys should be doing this and it's not a usual kind of diplomatic tone I feel. Do you think she's saying these things uh, in coordination with the US that she's spoken with them openly before this or do you think this could be something separate? Well, two, two things. One, she made it sound like that there was a little bit of tab, tacit understanding between the Washington uh, that at least uh, this proposal could be uh, discussed. And also this is the same uh, proposal that is made by Kim Jong-un in, in the, the inter-Korean summit. So this is uh, something that uh, has been uh, considered by both parties. And uh, this approach has been uh, actu actually tried before. And the, the fact that the talk has been stalled so far probably gives a kind of impetus that uh, the parties should uh, uh, try something different. I think that if, if you look at the kind of overall uh, en environment and the tones, uh, the Donald Trump is saying, that he's in love with uh, Kim Jong-un <laughs> and Pompeo is making the trips after canceled trips before. So there seems to be a little bit of uh, inching towards the, in the middle. If we uh, look at the, uh, the problem, uh, it's a gap between the CVID that the U.S. has been uh, pushing for and the step-by-step -step approach that the North Korea prefers. And CVID uh, probably is something that has not have a pretty good track record because of the Libya and what happened in other countries. So I, I think at least the U.S. is amenable to look at what it is a, what is a, a, a realistic uh, uh, implementable solution between the two. But uh, so far, if uh, Kang kyung uh, uh, proposal is just repeating what Kim Jong-un is saying, uh, probably Washington's uh, opposition will be pretty fierce. Uh, of course, the, the Trump is known for not following the advices of his uh, <laughs> top aides, but at this point, uh, we just note that there is a progress, at least, and it really depends on what happens with the Pompeo's uh, visit. I, I think after the, the, the last inter-Korean summit, the bowl is clearly in the court of the U.S. and the North Korea. In Kang's uh, interview with the Washington Post, she also suggested that the U.S. move towards an agreement to end the Korean War in exchange for uh, nuclear, uh, um, like a nuclear uh, denuclearization, such right. as the yeah. uh, um, shutting down of nuclear facilities. Do you think that is a fair exchange and something that the U.S. could go for at some point? Well, from an objective point of view, it, it is not, and that's what the critics point out. Uh, if, if you think about the denuclearization, you have a component of a future weapon and the present weapon. And dismantling the Yongbyon facility clearly addresses to the future weapon, but what about that, what they have, the stockpiles uh, that uh, has not been verified and has not been identified? So in that sense, uh, it, it is a fair exchange if we just look at the future, future nuclear, nuclear weapons. but. The more of a problem is the, the present stockpiles for what they have. Well, I, I think that if they do see that as a fair exchange, that means there has to be some sort of commitment that they're pushing towards uh, the, the identifying the, what the, the inventory is, what the stockpile is. Uh, if we accept the proposition that uh, the identifying what the stockpile is at this point uh, presumes a total uh, capitulation of the, of the North about their nuclear program. And if they think that that really is not a way to go in terms of a negotiation process, uh, probably there is a willingness at least uh, from the U.S. part to accept uh, less than uh, what uh, amounts to a total dismantling step of the, the present weapon. 
but that's that's a pretty hard choice. But that's why I think the personality of Trump and Kim Jong Un and their chemistry and whether they're in love or not <laughs> would play a part. And what Pompeo could glean from the detail uh, a, a negotiation in Pyongyang would make or break the process. North Korea, interestingly itself, has criticized uh, U.S. experts saying uh, that for suggesting the exchange between denuclearization and a declaration to end the war, uh, mm -hmm. you know, is, is the wrong way to go. They've said uh, that the declaration to end the war is not a bargaining chip. But if the U.S. did offer it, the North Koreans would be all over it, wouldn't they? Uh, I think that they will take it in an instance. Uh, but uh, I think the more worry is that they'll go more than that. Uh, I think they are really gunning for easing of the sanctions at some point. Uh, they don't want to bundle it at this point because they want it to step by step. But at some point, they will say, well, if the U.S.'s demand is as such, then in order to comply with that, there has to be a sanction. So I think that discussion will be coming. So you just mentioned sanctions there. Interestingly, uh, there's been a new development as well. The U.S. Treasury Department has imposed new sanctions related to North Korea. A Turkish firm with two individuals in it, along with a North Korean diplomat, have been blacklisted after they were allegedly involved in the trade of weapons and luxury goods. Mm -hmm. Now, the timing of these new sanctions catches the eye. It comes just days before uh, Pompeo visits Pyongyang. Do you think that was deliberate? Is uh, the U.S. sending a message to North Korea ahead of these talks? I'm not sure if the timing is coincidental or deliberate, but I, I think the basic policy of the U.S. has not changed, which is the sanction is the key to driving the negotiation with North Korea. And the, in order to have any kind of result, uh, they have to have the firm sanctions in place. And if any cause to increase it, they will do so up until the point where uh, any kind of concrete deal is made. So uh, I think this will continue. They will not really drive up uh, any uh, 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 phantom sanctions, but at the same time, they will, they will be doing their job in identifying the, the, the subject of sanctions and continue to import, enforce it. But doesn't it risk antagonizing the North Koreans just before they're about to have these important talks? Well, if you look at the negotiating style of these two countries, probably uh, they, they don't really go on in, in the aura of or euphoria of good feelings. I think they're very practical about it. And both parties have been uh, trying to secure uh, th th any kind of opportunity to say that we're driving a hard bargain. And if something goes wrong, we're ready to walk away. And I, I think that uh, the North Korea has been uh, showing that tendencies. and. Uh, as a deal maker, Donald Trump has uh, exhibited ample uh, tendencies that he's going to driving uh, a hard bargain. So just as uh, Pompeo prepares to head, head for talks with North Korea, North Korea sends its own diplomat uh, overseas as well. Vice Foreign Minister Che Sonny has set off for China, and she's also set to visit Russia mm. afterwards as well. Right. Now, again, the timing of this trip is interesting, I find. Does this show that North Korea is looking to coordinate with China uh, with, uh, for, before talks with Pompeo? In that sense, timing is very much deliberate. Uh, as I said, there is a a very active negotiation process going on between the two. And one of the most important things about the negotiation is the ability to say that we are ready to walk. We can walk away uh, if the, the good deal is not, uh, is not presented to us. And North Korea did that with China. And remember uh, last year, there was a surprise visit of Kim Jong-un to China uh, at the last minute when we're uh, ready to talk about China passing and whether China is a factor at all. China is behind this screen uh, these days pretty much and is a potentially a white knight for North Korea if the deal with the United States is not going well. And by the same token, uh, the talk with Russia, any move uh, between the North Korea and Russia probably can be viewed in the same vein, that North Korea is storing up or stockpiling the negotiation chips. A couple of things just before we go as well. So there are reports coming out from South Korea media suggesting that Kim Jong-un is 
possibly getting ready to visit Russia straight after these uh, talks with Pompeo. Mm -hmm. He's reportedly going to visit Vladivostok. I mean, how credible do we find these reports and why would Kim go at this time? Uh, I think that that uh, announcement or the report has been uh, coming in, in uh, pretty uh, good morsels from actually uh, from the Russian media. But that makes sense because Russia is one of the, the, the scary council members and the, the regional power. So uh, going back to negotiation uh, dynamics, uh, North Korea is well advised to have a close relationship with uh, China. Of course, China has been a kind of lifeblood, lifeline of North Korea, but the Russia as well. And if you look to the future prospect of economic development, probably Russia can play a pretty big role. But even discounting that, the, the present situation where the Security Council uh, members, two of them, is well on the side of North Korea uh, would only be a good thing for North Korea. And finally, very briefly, Pompeo will be arriving in Pyongyang on Sunday. How do you think it will go? Well, I, I think that the North Korea will try to drive a, a pretty hard bargain and the U.S. will do the same. But I just note that the, the, this process has progressed pretty uh, very slowly, but uh, we can see that from the same time last year and same time six months ago, we are getting down to the details uh, which we were anticipating. Uh, that the, the winner is in the details, devil is in the details, and we're at that point. Uh, probably the, the way it goes, the, the North Korea and the U.S. summit probably is hopeful, probably more positive than before. Uh, but it depends on uh, what kind of position that North Korea uh, presents to Tr uh, Trump and also Pompeo. Well, that's where we'll wrap things up. Thank you for coming in, Professor Song, as always, and sharing us your thoughts. My pleasure.